Hi everybody, and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs. I'm Andrew, and on the bench today are a couple of classic Lesney castings that I got in the mail from Phil at Diecast for you to see. The first one here is a 1 to 75 scale American Ford station wagon. As you can see from the Matchbox wiki page here, it originally came with no windshield and no interior. Secondly, there's a 1 to 62 scale Ford Anglia number 7B, issued between 61 and 66. I've spent the last two years trying to perfect getting new castings to look like this with such a lovely patina. Today I'll bring it back to almost new condition. The way I came across these was simply by being one of the winners on a giveaway on diecast for you to see, and true to his nature, Phil threw in all kinds of extra goodies, including these two, that he thought I might take a turn at restoring. So thanks for your patience, Phil. Now's the time for a twofer, and I hope you and everyone who's watching will enjoy my attempts at bringing these two old classics back to fine condition. In this video, I'm going to work on both cars concurrently because disassembly is the same for both, paint stripping is the same, and I don't want to make a double length long video. So I'll show most of the steps for one or the other car, but not both, for non-repetition purposes. You can see they both have a metal base here, and the matchbox axles are round on one end and peened on the other and so when you're removing these make sure you're not taking off the nice end but just the burr on the peened end like I'm doing right here and then one wheel will easily pull off and slip the rest through the axle holders like so and I'll go to work on those bent axles a little bit later wheels are very small and I don't have any replacements in this particular size so I'm going to refurbish the wheels and reuse them in these two projects. Be sure to check your calendar for a couple of upcoming special videos that I've got in my schedule including the monthly Four Horsemen Invitational and the Diecast International Builders 4x4 in the month of June. It's soon time again for the annual Canada Day Invitational. It's open to everybody worldwide and you just have to do a car in the Canadian flag colors of red and white. I sure hope you'll join us. I think it'll be a great time. We've already got more than 40 participants indicating that they'll be taking part this year again. That's great. I let all the metal casting parts go into the paint stripper and marinate for a little while, including the metal bases in this part. Today's community shout out goes to Hot Wheels Hunter Akron, and I invite you to give a visit to Pat by following the link in the description to see all about collecting and reviewing current and vintage models that he's interested in, and you will be too. Lots of shorts, styles, videos there, and let Pat know that you came by from Maple Leaf Customs, won't you? Thank you very much. I appreciate that, and we'll give him a boost and a hello, and make sure you get subbed up there. Both of my Lesney castings go into some bare metal detail stage now and they respond very well. Once the paint is off, it revealed that they are very true castings underneath, not excessive pitting or flashing, so they cleaned up quite nicely during this process. Look at the abrasive wheel and the change that happens in the surface of the die cast. If you're restoring or customizing, don't skip the very important bare metal detail steps. I can't tell you too much about this product flits in the process of the metal polishing. You put a little bit on, smear it around with your finger. The most important thing is that your buffing wheel be set on the very lowest speed that you can so as not to burn the product onto the casting. Everything begins by turning to a black sludge, but in no time at all you've got a beautiful reflective sheen on this. Always such a satisfying transformation. 
I give it a little rub to take off any extra polish and look at that more than 50 years old and they're starting to look like this picture when they were new I use the same engine degreaser in my real car that I bring into the hobby shop here to take off any oils or fingerprints and another quick wipe down before I give it a primer followed by a white base coat and a clear coat and a masking on the Anglia just on the roof so I can give it a two-tone paint job and this is going to be a Harry Potter car. I'll tell you why as we proceed through the video a little bit. The unmasking reveals a very nice careful job and I've got a beautiful baby blue and white two-tone paint job. It's beautiful. When I saw this picture of the station wagon, I knew instantly that's the paint scheme that I wanted to do. Instead of restoring an all yellow car like I received from Phil, I thought this will give it a little more personality. So, some careful masking again. Everything under the tape will remain white. The base coat that I applied after the primer and I mixed up predominantly orange with a few drops of red in it. And the unmasking here went very, very well, but not perfectly. I've got a little bit of bleed here, and so here's a tip. In the little plastic bottle cap on my desk, well, I put 50% fingernail polish remover and 50% water and a soft wooden toothpick and that's like a magic liquid eraser if you do it while the paint is still fairly fresh you'll have great success in cleaning up any of your little errors like i often make my next couple of cars all have colored windshield glass and so i took the opportunity to do one vacuum press for three windshields this is for the anglia Remember, the station wagon came into this world with no glass, and that's the way it's leaving the hobby bench today. Goodbye, paint stain green. Hello, clear. Nice. Some more careful masking just along the sides where I want to put a chrome strip, and there is no way I could do this freehand. So the masking ensures that I'm going to get a razor sharp edge on both sides with my Molotow chrome pen. And I don't let it set up too long, just long enough to grab a fresh coffee. And off comes the masking tape. I should say I clear coat the paint before I ever do any masking for a two-tone so that none is removed. You imagine that little putt-putt on the racetrack? Actually has a pretty good racing heritage, this little Anglia. I was surprised to learn that. I knew they could fly. <laughs> Didn't know they were racers though, but they are. I'm using some Tamiya chrome silver paint and a very fine detail brush to go over the front and the back grills and bumpers and the headlights as well and then the station wagon gets its turn on the detailing station for the same treatment okay i don't know how a seven-year-old boy or girl bends one of these heavy axles when they're playing with their toys but this one managed to get busted up i just used two of my hammers for a steel surface. Straighten them out with a few taps, put it into the power drill to remove the rust, and refurbishing all eight tires that are identical. Required a little spritz of black paint and some chrome hub detail. And now you can see the straightened out axles go back in beautifully. Put all four wheels on and as you recall, one end is factory rounded and the other end I had to remove the burr. So now, with my homemade anvil, I peen the other ends carefully to match. I'm 
Right, back to Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This is the Anglia from the 2002 film, and you'll see it's lightly weathered, not rusted. And to get a measure of authenticity, I'm doing the same effect here with my weathering powders. Okay, so it doesn't look brand new now, but it looks like a 1961 model car with a little bit of age patina on it. I did the same thing to the station wagon and then a little bit of taillight detail with some Tamiya Clear Red. And at the end of the week, it's time to put both of these classics back together. Remember, there's no interior, no glass for the station wagon, so it fits in with a tab in the back and a single screw in the front. Wheels were refurbished. And I checked that it's a good roller and it's perfect. Beautiful. And Harry Potter's Anglia gets the new vacuum form clear windshield, no interior, and the refurbished base also with a tab in the back and a single screw in the front. Pretty simple castings from back in the day, aren't they? Fits together as perfectly as I could wish that it would. The wheels are free and it's in great shape too. Let's have a closer look. I love the two-tone paint on this chrome strip, a little bit of weathering, refurbished wheels all around, and some minor detailing on the lights front and back. The base was just flitched up. I put a channel logo on there for identification purposes, and it came out great. Here's the Anglia with a little bit of aging effect on it. Not too much. It's not a rust bucket. Just been out and flying around. Picking up a little bit of atmospheric weathering. Also looking very good. You can't tell the difference now between the factory axle ends and the ones that I peened on my anvil, can you? As much as I loved the patina on both of these, just from their natural aging, I have to say I'm even more happy with the way these turned out. I think they look sweet. It was a twofer today because it's a classic pair of Lesneys from the same era, which arrived in my shop in the same mail call box. So I thought it would make a good tandem video today. I hope you enjoyed it. And Phil, I hope you appreciate the approach that I took on these two that you so generously supplied me with. Thank you again, my brother. As always, I put my finished cars into a blister pack, but these are not going to the Goodwill store. The special recipient of both of these is going to be my nine-year-old granddaughter and Harry Potter superfan, Margot. I'll see her in July when I return to Canada for the first time in two years. Thanks for visiting my channel today. I wish you all a great week. Drive carefully. It's coffee time.